Hello guys, welcome back to this channel. Thanks for viewing. Today we are going to talk about check boxes in Java using Java GUI. Okay, and uh, as we all know, a, a checkbox is a GUI component that can be selected and deselected. And in Java, we use the class called JCheckbox to create a, a checkbox. So the structure of my project uh, in this video is that I'm having two classes. The first class is the main class as usual. And in that class, I'm having the main method. And I have this line of code that is creating a frame of type my frame and my frame is the name of the second class of my project and uh, this second class is extending or inheriting the properties and the methods of the jframe class so that means that or the object of type my frame would actually be a frame because it is inheriting the jframe class which is the class the Java class used for creating frames. So for this particular video, I'm going to use uh, a flow layout for my frame. So I will say this, that set layout and then new flow layout. So I will set this particular layout manager for the frame. I need to import the flow layout class. And I will also remove the size. I want the frame to actually resize itself based on the element or the component it contains. So that's why I will remove that. And then I will add this, that pack. So the pack method would make sure that the frame would resize itself, would actually adapt its size based on the con components contained in that particular frame. And we also have to put that at the end like this for it to work, all right? So if you've done this, it's going to make sure that the size of the frame adjusts to the size of the components contained in that particular frame. So now we need to add our checkbox component. So as I was saying, we use the Java class called J checkbox. This, I will call this particular checkbox, checkbox, all right? Just to keep it simple, uh, I can add a uh, underscore BTN equal new J checkbox. Let me import checkbox. I can set the text of this particular checkbox by adding the text, a string value directly in its constructor here. I can say notify the user, something like that. Or I can use the set text method by simply writing checkbox underscore button that set text and in here i will pass my string value okay so you use either the first line of code or you remove the string passed here and then you set the text on a second line like this so i will comment the second line now what we're going to do we will add this particular checkbox to the frame so we will say this that add check box underscore uh, btn so let's run so now when you run you can see that we are having the checkbox you can click on it you can select it and deselect it and you have the text here that is saying notify the user all right so and also you can see that the text is actually surrounded by a border so if you want to remove that border what you have to do is to simply use uh, the set flexible method and set it to false. So we say checkbox and call btn that set focusable, and then we'll pass in the value false. There's a typo mistake here, so it's check. I need to place yeah like this. So now when you run, your text is no longer surrounded by the borders. You can also actually uh, play around with the text of your checkbox button. So simply say checkbox underscore btn that set font new font and here we say consolas font that bold and then we can increase the font size. Let's import the font class and when you run now you can see that the size of your font has actually changed all right so you can actually uh, even change the color of the text and all of that 
So now let's say that we want to create a, another component. And this time around, it's going to be a button. This button is going to allow us to check whether our checkbox is selected or not. So we say J button, BTN, new J button. We can simply add some text in here and import the J button class. Let's come here. We will add this particular button to the frame. So we will say this, that add BTN. So we want to implement the action listener. So we will come at the top here. We will say implement action listener. Let me import the action listener class. Uh, we'll also add an implemented method, which is the action performed method. And I will also need to add the action listener to the button. So I will say but btn that add action listener. And I will say this because we are finding our, ourselves in the class that is implementing the action listener interface. So now in the action listener method, we will write this. So we will say if, so the argument that is passed in this method is the action event argument. So I will call this EVT for event. And I will say if event gets source. So that means if the source of the event is the button or if the user clicks on a button, we want to have a string that will store the value returned by the checkbox button is selected. And then we will say system that out that print line and we will output str. So you can see we are having some errors. Why? Because we didn't declare these particular components globally. We declare them in the um, constructor. So we need to declare them globally. I will simply copy and paste them outside of the constructor here. I uh, will do the same thing for the button, uh, J button, semicolon, and I uh, can directly remove J text box here and then here. So now we have to, okay, that's it. Okay, we need to change the type of this. So it needs to be Boolean because this is selected is actually returning true or false. So it needs to be a Boolean variable. Let's run and see. So we have the button, let me click. And it checks whether the button has been selected. So it says false. So what we are saying here is that when the user clicks on the button, we want you to return either true or false based on whether the checkbox is selected or not. Let me run. If I select here and then click on send. So it returns true because the checkbox was selected. All right. So if I deselect it and then click on send, it returns false. So that's actually what the program is doing. It's checking whether the checkbox is selected or not. So that's the small program and how you could actually play around the checkbox and uh, note this particular method is saying is selected. So we could, we could actually write something like this. Instead of writing Boolean here, let me comment this line of code. We could directly copy and uh, paste this line of code here. All right. We could directly write this line of code checkbox that is selected. So all that we would say is that if the source of the event is the button or if the user clicks on the button, we want you to check the state of the checkbox, whether it's selected or not. If it is selected, this would return true. But if it is not selected, it's going to return false. So that's basically what the is selected method does. It checks whether the checkbox is selected. If it is selected, it will return true. If it is not selected, it will return false. So that's when you run your program and then le let me select the checkbox. And then when I click on send, now you can see in the console we are having true because indeed the checkbox was selected. If I deselect it and then click on send, now you see it's returning false in the console. So that was it on checkboxes, how you could uh, create a checkbox and uh, add it to your frame, how you could also associate that checkbox with a button and this small program that we have seen. 
And I hope uh, this video was informative and please don't forget to like, to share, to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this one. Let's meet in the next one.